declining mental capacities. I mean, I would say evidence of that is something that was like like made clear before the debate, and I think in a lot of the like uh, news articles I've seen after the debate. And, and I'm talking about the fact that he flew to the debate in Philadelphia and arrived with his personal consigliere, Laura Loomer. Unbelievable. What who a was fucking the, who, glow Who was the her. person who apparently, according to The Guardian or other re, uh, news reports I said today, is that like people in the Trump clamp are blaming her for the pet shop debacle at the debate. And it's just sort of like, what I want to say is like, you know, political ideology aside, like, if you are a supporter of Donald Trump or a fan of his, wh- how, what do you have to say about the, a man who would allow someone like Laura Loomer into their inner circle and take her advice on anything? It's amazing. It's also, I'm, yeah. honestly, like, I'm kind of proud of her to a certain extent. Like, this is because she's never been the most talented. You know, when you look at the rankings of like GOP Renfield mentality types, like, it's not, the metrics are not there. Like she's um, unsettling in every way, and yet she just never stopped grinding. And obviously, at some point, like everybody else decided that they needed to detach from him or whatever, and like that was it. She was ready. Yeah, I, in an oblique sense, do root for her sometimes because, um, yeah, on the GOP side, there are like um, star players, people who are going to be fine no matter what. Like, no matter if the administration they're part, they're part of ends in disgrace, no matter if they are mentioned in a federal indictment, they're always going to have a paycheck. They're always going to be able to pay off their house that is half ATV ramps. Yep. The Dan Bongino <laughs> types. Yeah, there's Laura like... Loomer, uh, or Laura Loomer has never been that type. Laura Loomer, um, she got her start, and this is my favorite thing about her, perhaps, she got her start by starting a ISIS fan club at her college to prove that liberals would join an ISIS fan club. No one joined, and then she got expelled for starting an ISIS fan club. And that really just set the tone for her entire career. She has never succeeded in, in anything. All of her, uh, we'll call them campaigns, end in people publicly mocking her. And I don't think she has ever achieved a single objective. She doesn't even, the, the, the only Laura Loomer fan I have ever seen in the wild, and this is the most telling thing, because every fucking loser has fans now. Yep. But Laura Loomer, the only fan of hers I ever saw was this like 79-year-old guy in Florida who was probably a member of the Irgun, <laughs> was like, "You're Laura, you're one badass Jewish lady like the kind that helped me blow up the King David Hotel. And like like, like all of the, those are her na- her national constituency are like people who had to move from Israel to Florida because of a rare blood disease. All of them died from COVID. She is alone in this world but she somehow made it to uh, the Olympic team. Yeah. You know, good for her. Yeah, this is you know, you don't really know like what it's gonna, so anybody obviously could have done the start an ISIS fan club. No one joins ISIS fan club. Kicked out of college. Also somehow banned from Uber Eats for life or whatever. <laughs> she, she's she got a lot of like weird. Ban- like She's got some of this is the one area where I would quibble with that. She has no achievements. She's been banned from things that like don't ban people. Yeah. <laughs> like slice the app that brings you pizza. They're like, we will not do business with Ms. Loomer. And she knows why this <laughs> we are not going to revisit this decision at any time soon. If she tried to pick up like a free window AC unit from Craigslist, like a SWAT team would come to her house. <laughs> Ma'am, they've told you you're not allowed to like take things for free on Craigslist. We've been over this. Stay out of Facebook Marketplace, you deadbeat. <laughs> if she tried to play Farmville, Interpol would arrest her. I mean, but, um, Somehow the, accidentally uh, committing human trafficking in Farmville and being <laughs> absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's uh, one of my favorite, but the most enduring image of her is she. So when I was at Deadspin, our, our offices were on like 17th Street and in Manhattan and then a few blocks west were the Twitter offices. And at one point she chained herself to the doors of Twitter to protest being banned, but like definitely did not do it in a way that was like, I think either what she intended or what she was trying to do, whatever it was, she chained herself to one of two doors that opened. 
And then the other door, there was like during her live stream, you would just see people coming and going as David. they pleased <laughs> David. through the other door while she was chained to this one being like, I am actually having the Holocaust happen to me right now. David, it, Catherine, it was- covered, Catherine covered the Laura Loomer handcuffing herself to the Twitter door and she, she showed up in front of Twitter and she was, she was telling me about it while it was going on. And I was watching the live stream of people walking in and out of the door and I said, Catherine, Ask her why she hasn't handcuffed herself across both handles of the door <laughs> so that it would actually block people from going in. And she asked her, and Laura's response to her credit was, it would be a violation of the fire code. <laughs> 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 you know, so she's conscientious in that regard. So I, I, will, I will give her a credit for not violating yep. the fire code and blocking any emergency exits to a, a large building. It's also, I think, imagining her yelling it in that, like, kids in the hall chicken lady voice that she's just <laughs> been yelling at them, like, at the cameras at, like, just sort of being like, good question. It's because of the violation of the fire code. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is like a haplessness to her that like you know, we spent a lot of time covering Jacob Wool. And like Jacob the, Wool, the, the I god, think the yeah. god, the god, the goat. Ja- Jacob <laughs> Wool is like he could he wouldn't be the main character, but he would be an amazing side character in an Alexander Payne film. Yep. There's like some pathos there. Because he has, like, some crazy scam artist dad who probably, like, you know, did, like, a uh, Maranovich-type situation with teaching him how to pretend to fall in front of an ice cream truck for the time he was a toddler. He was, like, you know, it, little David was probably, like, three years old, and the dad's like, we just fitted him for his first neck brace. He's a prodigy. <laughs> I love the uh, idea of a Marv Marinovich of, like, a shit coin scam. <laughs> just, like, again. Again, like we're just watching the kid tweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can, yeah, you cannot wear anything. Nothing can touch your body except for a twenty-three dollar three-piece suit that's <laughs> advertised to you on Amazon. But he, there, there is, you know, like I, I, I felt some, I would say pity towards Jacob Wool because it is like, what can you do when you're like psycho dad? Just like basically grooms you into doing that. Um, in the traditional sense of grimmick, but, um, with Laura Loomer, it's just, I, it's impossible for me to see her as anything but a fictional character, even though that I know she is real. She, she does not scan as a real person to me. Sideshow Mel has more, (laughs) uh, personhood (laughs) to me. There's cheese in this sandwich. Surely, you know, I'm lactose intolerant. Do you know how sick this is going to make me? Come stand next to the bathroom door. I want to yell at you some more. Why, you little rat scallion? Show business sucks. I'm out of here. (laughs) I don't think, I think if you like dropped her off of a cliff, she would pause for nine seconds and go, "Uh (laughs) (laughs) uh-oh. Like it makes the Hanna Barbera running sound whenever she walks. <laughs> yeah, she does yeah. have a kind of a cartoonish aspect there. I yeah. I mean, the thing with this is that like you don't. It's impossible to hand it to her. Like she's incredibly <laughs> vile, you know. And yet, like I completely agree that there's an element of her where just like she is in a field of like really some of the worst people that the culture has ever produced. She is the one that like has fought having to get a real job the hardest. And in some ways I think will be the one where like, I mean, I don't want to get ahead of like, because the Trumpists are going to try to steal the election. I don't know that they're not going to win it outright. Like it's a, it's a bad time. It's uneasy. The bit that I am looking forward to tentatively the most is all of these people having to get real jobs. If he loses is like Sebastian Gorka having to like, just get uh like your, like, a forklift operator license, like, or go teach, go do like one of the things that like would actually add some value to society instead of um, having a podcast where you sell emergency meals to people who are like basically in comas. Like Laura Lumer see, getting a real been, job is I see you've been imagine. eyeing my Wienermobile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. The thing about Loomer that makes it hard to envision a world where she has to do that for me Is that like everyone else in the Trump world and especially like the neo Trump world 
they embody some type of archetype, right? Like they, they, with like Alana Haba or any of the, like the bad Trump lawyers, you kind of you can evince the type of uh, character they are in a in a life divorce from politics. Like with Alana Haba, I see her and I go, evil real estate agent. Yeah, absolutely. You know, she's she's she is the type of person where it's like. She tries to hire a hitman to kill her husband so she can inherit a safe that has nothing in it. <laughs> That's the type of person she is. I've met people like that. I've known people like yeah. that. Um, you, you know, uh, Dan Bongino, same thing. Uh, it, it, they all are these characters from American life that we yeah. can all recognize. Bongino to me is a gym owner who gets caught trying to commit arson. <laughs> yes, yes. But yes, he is the type of guy who like tries and fails to burn down his gym for insurance money, and his way of like uh, setting it up is to send himself an email from a burner account that's like ISIS at hotmail dot com. Yep, and it's like <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna kill you for being Christian, and he'll yep. be like, "Look at this." Um, they said my but- stair climbers were haram, and then this happens. <laughs> that was earlier today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, like all identifiable. But Laura Loomer is like one of one, uh, you know, how she started out in life. You could picture her as like someone who marries a kind of hunchbacked orthodontist <laughs> and is a very annoying PTA member. But she rebelled against that to the point of altering her face so she could never become that. <laughs> she became a unique one of one, a type of person I don't believe I've ever encountered in my life. Yeah, maybe if we spent. Like, it, I think if you were to go, like, on a fact-finding mission to Palm Beach County, Florida, for, like, a year, you might come close. But I think it's, like, it really is, you need, first of all, you need, it's a resource-intensive thing. To get, like, a new dramatic face applied to your head every six months for years is, like, most people, it's not in the budget. And I don't know what her <laughs> means of support is. Like, she doesn't have, like, does she sell emergency meals too does she have some other you know that's like can point. You... I, I don't know i don't think that's the other thing about loomer like i, I mean i i'm I, i'm sure i'm probably wrong about this but i don't feel like i've ever seen laura loomer flogging some sort of like loomer coin or yeah. you know like uh patriot fanny packs to keep the, the immigrants away from your wallet like you know it's it, just it, she's a real one i don't know if you told me that like she has been living in her car this entire time. I would 100% yeah. buy that because I can't like forget, you know, hawking a shit coin and making like hundreds of thousands of dollars. I cannot picture her like getting it together to apply for an apartment. Like how, yeah. how would that go? Not well. Yeah. And, and, and like, yeah, I, any money she generates, if she generates any at all, I picture her making money the same way that the three stooges did. Perhaps <laughs> like I feel like any pot, any revenue she has seen over the course of her adult life is a result of like running a metal detector up and down a beach. Now, now Mrs. Now Mrs. Luber, we've hired you to move my priceless art collection uh, to my new abode. Now, now I needed to say that you must handle all of these, uh, this Ming vase quite gingerly. <laughs> Laura Loomer is the only person where, like, yeah, she would get hired for some ignominious job, like the the assistant to the nighttime janitor at a museum, and she would end up being chased by a mummy. <laughs> She's the only person who could bring Three Stooges and Scooby Doo type physical and yeah. and theological logic to the world. Uh, Stephen well, Miller could never. He's yeah, no. she's got no, that. God no. God no. God, no. 